Welcome to my lecture that will introduce you to Espresso Software Package. My name is Kai Sutor. I'm one of the Espresso developers at the Institute of, for Computational Physics at the University of Stuttgart. And this lecture will mainly show research that has been performed with Espresso by means of visualizations. But let's first start with the basics about Espresso. To introduce Espresso to you, I'm showing the GitHub profile to you, which shows the most important keyword associated with it. So first of all, Espresso is an open source software project published under the GPL3 license, which basically means you can run, study, share and modify the software as you like. It is developed in the group of Professor Christian Holm at the University of Stuttgart. Espresso is a multi-physics simulation software that incorporates molecular dynamics that can be covered with continuum methods on a grid, namely lattice Boltzmann for hydrodynamics and a grid-based solver for the electrokinetic equations. The Espresso project's code is hosted on the public code platform GitHub. You can visit the homepage and directly look at the current development state, stage changes, which are called pull requests on GitHub and issues that need to be resolved. In the last years, a lot has changed concerning the development process of Espresso. In the beginning, a few PhD students had write access and directly pushed changes to the repository. Nowadays, every change to the code base needs to be approved by a core developer. In addition, we added more and more unit tests for the C++ core and integration tests for the Python interface, the sample scripts and the tutorials. All these checks are automatically run when a pull request is opened on GitHub. After a pull request has been merged, we automatically publish the new interface and code documentation to the Espresso website. In regular offline meetings, we discuss new projects and ongoing progress of refactoring and issue fixing. The results of the offline meetings are published to the wiki page of the Espresso project on GitHub. On the right hand side, you can see a screenshot of the GitHub website for a pull request that is ready to merge. You can here see that all checks passed and we only see green check marks. On the bottom, you can see an example for a comment of a core developer on a pull request that needs to be resolved before the changes can be merged. Espresso is around since about 2001 and has proved to be a suitable tool to perform soft matter research that is highly visible. Here we just picked three examples that made it to the cover of the journal. I will talk about the Nature publication on the left hand side on the next slide. The publication shown in the middle is about star polyelectrolytes in a poor solvent where they investigated morphologies in dependence of the number of arms. On the right hand side, Man et al. investigated the swelling behavior of polyelectrolyte shells with a diamond lattice topology. They studied a large range of different parameter combinations, namely the fraction of charged monomers, the strength of electrostatic interactions and various strand lengths. So let's start with the first example of an animation of an espresso simulation. This example shows the result of a coarse-grained membrane simulation. We can see that curvature inducing model proteins adsorbed on lipid bilayer membranes experience attractive interactions that arise purely as a result of membrane curvature. The authors found that once a minimal local bending is realized, the effect robustly drives protein cluster formation and subsequent transformations into vesicles. Detailed information to the samples can be found in the respective publication. This example shows the translocation of a coarse grained double stranded DNA molecule from one electrolyte reservoir to another through a nanoscale conical nanopore. The translocation is driven by an external electric field. While the DNA translocates through the pore, the ionic current is modulated. With a similar model system, experimental findings have already been reproduced, and currently, this system is used to investigate the influence of pore conicity as well as possible finite size effects that may play a role for the translocation of more complex DNA origami structures. Since hydrodynamic interactions play a role here uh, and can not be neglected for this system, the lattice Boltzmann hydrodynamic solver has been coupled to molecular dynamics. Here we see an animation of a colloidal suspension in confinement. 
colloids are shown in yellow. The velocity of the thermalized lattice Boltzmann fluid is shown color coded in the background. In this study, simulations with hydrodynamic interactions have been compared to simulations without hydrodynamics, thus comparing the behavior of a colloidal suspension and a colloidal melt. The authors found a significant reduction of the crystal growth velocity due to hydrodynamic interactions even at moderate hydrodynamic coupling. Thus, the dynamics of uh, colloidal suspension differ strongly from that of a melt, making it less useful as a model for solvent-free melts than previously thought. This is again an investigation of the importance of hydrodynamic interactions. On the left side, a pack of particle sediments without hydrodynamic interactions, whereas on the right side, hydrodynamic interactions are explicitly taken into account via the lattice Boltzmann method. It can be seen that the behavior of the two systems significantly differ and that the hydrodynamic interactions speed up the sedimentation. Once a particle breaks out of the pack, it creates a fluid flow that pulls other particles with it, resulting in a significantly higher overall sedimentation speed of the pack. This animation shows a particle-driven Poisson flow. The white particles are pushed pushed through the channel by an external force and, due to frictional coupling with the lattice Boltzmann fluid, induce a flow. However, since the fluid also interacts with the two solid walls at the top and the bottom, the well-known parabolic velocity profile is established across the channel, indicated by the arrows. A larger arrow corresponds to a larger fluid velocity, in addition, also the fluid velocity is color-coded. This animation shows the movement of a swimmer model in a confined geometry. The swimming model's essential aspect is that a force is applied to the body, consisting of many fluid particle coupling points, here shown in green. In addition, the system is made force-free by applying an equal and opposite force to the lattice Boltzmann fluid. This coupling gives rise to a series of hydrodynamic modes for anisotropic particles. The main findings in this study are that depending on the swimming mechanism, the swimmers either perform a sinusoidal movement with increasing magnitude or a damped oscillation towards the center of the channel. This example shows the movement of self-propelled swimmers in a square channel. In addition to straight swimming, a run and tumble mechanism is added that mimics the behavior of living E. coli bacteria. At the center of the channel, a here invisible cylindrical obstacle is placed to study the accumulation of living bacteria in microporous geometries. In this system, the lattice Boltzmann fluid is driven by an external force density pointing to the right. This simple setup makes it possible to study the bacterial accumulation behind the obstacle and study the influence of various boundary conditions. These simulations showed good qualitative and quantitative, quantitative agreement with experimental studies. In this example, a bifilm information is investigated in a porous environment. The influence of external flow on the formation process as well as the influence of the bifilm on the flow through the structure is investigated. This is an example of current research of a PhD student here. Fast prototyping could be done with the versatile Python interface of Espresso that makes it possible to manipulate the particles whenever needed. Here, for example, the attaching process, as well as the creation of additional swimmers, is implemented on the interface level. Later, this prototype might need a core implementation to speed up the simulations for the production state. Here we can see the animation of an espresso electrokinetic simulation of a charge density that is attracted by an externally driven fluid. The charge density is shown in dark and an obstacle is shown in brown. A turbulent flow establishes and vertices can be seen in the dark color. This animation shows the formation of aggregates in turbulent flows. A larger vast dynamic simulation has been coupled to a turbulent fluid flow field. In this study, millions of particles have been simulated in dynamic bond formation, while collision detection has been used to investigate the dependency of the aggregate formation 
on the particle size, the fluid properties, and characteristic timescales. This study would not have been possible without the MPI parallelism of Espresso. In this example, the charging and discharging dynamics of nanoporous capacitors is investigated. The time-dependent applied voltage significantly influences the time needed to charge the capacitor. A slow voltage sweep was found to be optimal for the charging performance. The discharging process, however, was found to be fastest if the voltage is switched off in a step-like fashion. At the bottom of the animation, the number of positive and negative ions that are in the slit pore are shown over time. In the top view, one can observe the so-called ion trapping in the pore. The red ions can only enter after the blue ions left the pore. This process can be sped up with a slow increase of the charging voltage over time. In this last example, the results of a currently developed algorithm dealing with a binary fluid mixture is shown. Here a binary fluid is placed between two walls and a finite slip boundary condition is applied at a top wall. The algorithm used here is based on two interacting lattice Boltzmann fluids. So to summarize, I have shown you some use cases of Espresso and I hope that I could give an interesting overview of what can be done with Espresso. In short, Espresso's selling points are the Python interface that can be used to directly interact with the simulation and develop prototypes very fast. Espresso also incorporates advanced electrostatic algorithms like P3M, ICC, and ELC. In addition, Espresso offers the possibility to couple grid-based methods like lattice Boltzmann or electrokinetics to molecular dynamics. Another selling point is the active development of Espresso, where we constantly seek to improve the user experience and the test coverage to ensure good code quality and correctness. To get support by other Espresso users, you can write an email to espressomd-users at nonknu.org. And additional information can be found either on the homepage of Espresso or by visiting the Espresso project on GitHub. Thank you for your attention and have fun learning how to use Espresso.